what was the number that you saw that made you say, my God, we getting this for this? Um, let's see. I think it, it got to where we would be able to say, like, like it, it got to a point where the money was just flowing and we could just say no a lot, right? Ooh. And once you start really saying no, people start raising their dollar to get you to say yes. My God. And, you know, without being too specific, I, I, I remember a moment where it was like, you know, damn, it's a couple million dollars to do something really small. <laughs> You know, and it's like, wow, because you because, you know, no, no long enough. And there's value in it, you know, but it doesn't take but so much time or actual effort from the person. Yeah. You know, especially now when you can just, um, you know, even today, you can imagine when someone can make a post. Yeah. It doesn't take much time at all. Yeah. Right. Or someone could do, uh, you know, just kind of endorse something, mm -hmm. you know, and you can you can get millions of dollars for this when they realize that you that that you carry enough weight and enough people pay attention to you and that that uh, there's an audience that, you know, that identifies with you. Mm -hmm. and, if the, and, the, and that audience, you know, is likely to engage in something that you suggest to them, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's valuable. What are some bad business practices that you see people engage in that cause them to be unsuccessful? Uh, the number one, I would say, is not paying their team. Mm. You know, uh, anybody I've seen that had that reputation of not paying their team has been the the ones that didn't go far yeah. because the reality is nobody is a successful individual by themselves. Yeah. Everybody in this game that has been successful is that because there's a group of people because it's only so much any one person can do, period. Mm -hmm. Right. And especially if you're going to be the talent, the artist, the character, then how can you do that and then turn around and say, OK, now let me handle this and do that and, and then turn around and do, you know, yeah. it's tough. So people who don't pay their team lose that team, mm -hmm. or the team stays with them, but they, they, ain't know, doing they, don't, shit. they don't do much work because they're like, I'm not getting paid from this, so I'll get around to that because I got I to gotta gotta make money. I got to work for the things that's going to pay me, that's so right. those things keep jumping in front. So you have you know, that issue. Mm -hmm. You also have people that are uh, creatives that either like sign stuff without a lawyer reading it. Mm -hmm. That's probably you know the the biggest mistake because you, you end up cutting your legs off before you can even find out that you should have paid your team because <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that's, you did that in the beginning, mm -hmm. you signed something with somebody who d has no idea what they're doing. Yeah. Right. Atlanta, because the music industry is so big and because the film and TV industries have come here, mm -hmm. you have a lot of people here who also are kind of what I call the razzle dazzles, right? They mm -hmm. kind of, you know, trying to sell people a dream who exactly. really can't even help them. Right. And so, seen it. you know, and so you got people that either one have paid these people a bunch of money. Yeah. Or two have signed something with these people without having uh, a contract looked over. So those things, you know, big, big no no's, period. You know, oh God. Yeah. So now back to the BME, what was it that caused y'all to dissolve it and go y'all separate ways? So when. We, we, were, we were in a renegotiation with Warner Brothers at a particular time. Mm -hmm. And it was some things going on in business that, in particular, John was like, I don't really like the way this is going. Mm -hmm. And we're hot. Mm. Like, I, like I just said, Coach said, y'all were like QC at the time. Yeah. Right? So we ended up deciding we were going to break off that negotiation and, you know, go, you know, go take our, 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 us as a company out and talk to some other labels. We're going to go see, see where we're going to go with it. Mm -hmm. Well, around that same time, as happened, chance would happen, the music industry was going into a complete crash. Mm. The Napster issue. Yeah. Right? So it was the worst time to be the high ticket item. Like, we was the most expensive thing around. Shit. We were the high ticket <laughs> item at a time that the labels were like, we don't even know how we're going to keep our doors open. Yeah. Right? They hadn't even, they, they had not come up with the, even the 360 idea yet. Yeah. They were like, we're spending the money, but nobody's buying music anymore. Everybody's sharing it for free. Mm -hmm. Right? And so it, it, it was a, just the worst time to be in that position, mm -hmm. saying, yeah, but here we are, the guys that just broke Trivia, Scrappy Crime Mob, did those couple of albums with E-40, we had the Bo Hagen stuff yeah. going. You know, we was like, yeah, you're going to pay us a top, top dollar to bring this, machine over there yeah 
but it was just like like it was kind of like uh, if you were selling thousand dollar jeans at the same time that the market crashed, mm-hmm. right? At that moment, people were like, "I'm not buying thousand dollar exactly. jeans right now." When the housing trying to bubble, put some pants on. When the, when the housing bubble happened, right? <laughs> yep. You know, we were we were the thousand dollar jeans at the at the moment where the whole music industry was like. We we are on. We might be done. This this might be over, you know. My God. Yeah. So that that just was what it was for that period of time, mm-hmm. which really caused everybody to really try to figure out. Okay, what's our own personal next play? Mm-hmm. If the BME thing can't be, you know, yep. what we think it should be, and we're not gonna undersell ourselves. We're not gonna go out here and 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 sell ourselves off of pennies. Yeah. Uh, and so John, you know, really started committing himself then to. You know, it became just John. It mm-hmm. wasn't so much John and the East Side Boys, and he started committing himself to. Uh, I think at that time he kind of was going into the rock stuff. Yeah, more the rock stuff, and then ultimately EDM. So he was kind of figuring out what his next play Exit was. Strategy, you know, mm-hmm. just the next play, really, yeah. because John is not a look back kind of person. He's yeah. really a what's next kind of person. Whether mm-hmm. it was DJing reggae, DJing house, mm-hmm. DJing bass music, you know, crunk creating crunk, on and on. Yeah. You know, so for me, it was the fallback. <laughs> ah, I'm a lawyer. Don't forget. Come on now, I'm, I'm with you. On I'm with you. You know what I mean? And so, uh, and and I I had really always been thinking about, man, look at all those clients that you let go Shit. when BME took off. Because yeah. when the label took off, I was like, hey, Jeezy, hey, you know, Pastor, you, you know, people who I, I was like, this thing is taking off now. This Damn. is what I've been working on. I'm going to kind of. You know, I should have been like, let me just try to keep them as clients, exactly. but it was like, oh, it was no, a lot. this is what I want to do, and I'm running this label now. Mm-hmm. So now I hadn't been practicing for some time, you know. So then I had to go back and start getting new clients and that kind of thing, which was a rebuild because people at that time did not know that Vince discovered Scrappy or Trillville. Or yeah. Because it didn't, that wasn't a sexy story. So the story <laughs> was Lil John discovered him. Like, that, you know, that was kind of my, I, I pushed that out there because mm-hmm. I thought, I always wanted it to be the right thing that made people be interested. Exactly. And it sounded better to me. I think it would sound better to anybody to say that Lil John went and found these artists. Exactly. Than to say, yeah, law, the lawyer from the crew. <laughs> he the one found with the super artists. That don't make sense, exactly. you know? Just don't, you know. So now I'm realizing, damn, but without that reputation, you know, I don't have the value. The of leverage so going back out of what yeah. I did. Nobody knows, so now yeah. I'm out here kind of like, you know, trying to toot my horn and stuff, <laughs> you know. But ultimately, I think um, I think I got with Kevin Gates was one of the first of the next big wave for me, and so yeah. I started repping Kevin, and I kind of approached it in a way, the same way that I do. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help but have, like, a, my BME mind. Yeah. So I'm coming to him and Breadwinners Association and Drika, and I'm, and I'm giving them paperwork advice, but also, like, how do you succeed, advice? Yeah, you know, yeah. and then that just continued on into the other clients on up. So now, you know, we got the kids, bottom got them, and yeah. uh, uh, Mooski, and yeah. those are the most recent deals, you know, and uh, um, and so it's still more like I want to give that additional kind of advice about how to truly succeed as men, women in this business, um, and, and, and as creatives. And then ultimately have a career beyond, you know, 